actions from their last um, meeting, our uh, meeting notes, um, and I think we did uh, discuss about revising the CRISP team charter, so it would be good to confirm the latest status on that. And then um, there was a bit of um, uh, website revision uh, with um, efforts of the RIR comms team, so um, just a brief update on that. Um, and then the main things that we'd like to discuss for this call is one is um, the intellectual property rights, uh, which needs coordination with the CWG. Uh, another thing is that um, the ICG's public comment is out and the deadline is until the 8th of September. So we um, we want to be preparing our comment as a crisp team, which we have started the work. And then the last point that I want to cover is that the um, second version of the uh, SLA is out as well. So would like to um, be good to confirm the current status and the next steps. So um, anything else that people would like to discuss at the call today? Um, I'm not seeing any hands. So let's go straight to the actions review. So our meeting notes, um, have I missed the um, circulation of the meeting notes from the last call? Um, if I did, uh, please remind me and uh, I'll comment on that so that it can get uh, published. And so I've noticed a couple of um, uh, meeting records are not um, not visible from the uh, website at the moment. I don't know if that's because of the website changes um, which took place, or um, and it would be really, really helpful if the NRO secretariat team can just um, double check to see if all the meeting records are posted up on the website. Um, so, okay, we'll do that. Thanks, Loriana. And, um, and then let's go to um, the Chris team charter. So I wasn't um, at the last call, so I wonder if um, Nurani, would you be able to give a brief update about the status here? Certainly, and hello everybody. Um, well, at the last um, call we talked about um, the charter and there was general agreement um, uh, on that um, charter as uh, it was written within notifications uh, put in. Uh, I also raised the issue of making ourselves available to the NTIA or anyone else for that matter post submission to the NTIA and there seemed to be general agreement on that and I circulated uh, uh, that updated text. Um, and I think that's the last uh, that has happened with it. So I presume that um, if everyone is, is comfortable with that text, that we should probably uh, return that back to the NRO EC and that we should also um, put it to the community. Okay, thanks. So maybe we just uh, give one more round, maybe another um, 24 hours. So um, UTC 14, um, the 13th of um, August. And then if there are no further comments, then I think uh, we consider this fixed. So um, if you wouldn't mind, Rani, um, would you send a reminder to the Chris team list and um, you know, make it a last call of comments for the Chris team charter? And then if no comments, um, we'll, we'll fix it. Thanks, Nurani. And then on the communications, um, so I think a couple of you have already noticed that uh, we really um, with the help of the RIR comms um, team, um, change the structure of the website. Uh, so it's much more easy to find um, the categories of information. And um, I think there are some additional um, um, components listed, such as um, related to the IN and numbering services and things like this. So if you notice anything about the website, I think your feedback is more than welcome, and Anurani and myself can communicate this back to the RIR comms team. So um, on your point, Andre, about uh, making sure we have the Chris team proposal listed on the um, Chris team page, I think this is now addressed with um, the PDF HTML version and the French translation, translated version. Yep. Okay. Thanks, uh, 
Andre for this confirmation. So I think that's basically the update. Um, and um, let's pause for a while to see if any questions on this. No, so uh, let's go to. Oh, thank you, Moendo. That's lovely to hear. Okay, I'll take this uh, feedback to um, an RIO comms team. Um, so let's go to our main point of the agenda, the intellectual property rights. So um, before we go into the discussions, uh, let me share that we had the call. Nurani and myself uh, joined the call with the CWG chairs, the IANA plan chairs, and the ICG uh, representatives from NRO and IETF also joined the call, as well as the ICG chairs. And um, well, I don't think there really is much new information from the side of the CWG um, since what I shared on the mailing list. So I think a lot of the time was uh, spent on sharing our perspective. Um, so I guess um, uh, we actually explained from scratch um, the rationale behind our proposal, why we think that the, um, it makes sense for us um, to keep these rights to the IETF trust and, and, uh, and things like this. And I also briefly shared our observation um, on the consistency with the, um, the CRISP team proposal on Sidley's memo. So the next uh, step uh, requested is that uh, we share this uh, analysis and observations um, to the CWG in writing so that when they have the next call on the 20th of August, um, they can review this. And then this would be a reference for the CWG to consider their position. So it's not just going to be based on Sidley's memo, but they would actually um, be able to consider with the um, observations from from the CRISP team, um, especially whether a certain option is consistent with a proposal or not. Um, at this point, uh, it's not clear that uh, we did actually ask for the timelines expected in relation to this and how this would be uh, in line with the ICG process. And my understanding is that um, since it's the public comment period of the ICG, they considered to use this opportunity to make their comment as the CWG on the current proposal. And there was a lot of um, encouragement from um, Elisa as the ICG chair that um, CWG probably wouldn't want to come up with a, a new, totally new uh, proposal that is not consistent with um, with the numbers um, community proposal, which would require us to go back to our communities. Not only that, but then it would also require the ICG to redraft their proposal and then uh, run through another public comment uh, with the new components added. So um, it was really emphasized that this could disrupt the overall timelines. And I, I think this message was um, taken uh, and understood by, by the chairs, the CWG chairs. Of course, I think that still mean, doesn't mean that the CWG as a whole would totally agree. Other chairs can't guarantee that this would be the case. But um, so that's, that was just uh, something that was uh, acknowledged. And then, um, and then I think they're expecting to submit their comment. They said before the close of the, um, the comment period, um, which would be the 8th of September. Uh, so uh, to be honest, it's a little bit um, uh, later than I was sort of hoping and expected because in case they come up with, uh, with a direction that it may need discussions within the numbers community, that means that we have to have these discussions after uh, the close of the comment period, which may have some impact on the timelines. Uh, but that's something that is still a little bit gray. And um, so I'll first um, uh, finish here for now. And, um, and I did uh, circulate a draft um, memo of um, observation as the numbers community on not just the Siddeley's um, options, but uh, on the IPR in general. Uh, so 
I'd be interested to hear your comments. And also, oh, I don't know if uh, Nurani wants to add anything else. So I first see hand from uh, Paul, but let's go to Nurani first to add any information, and then let's go to Paul. Oh, well, I, uh, I think you, you gave an excellent summary, so I don't have that much to add. I, I just wanted to, to be clear about one point, um, and that is uh, that, that from our perspective, and, and uh, also from, from what I gathered from Alyssa, the ICG chair's perspective, the ball is really in the court of the CWG. Um, and um, we, I personally also pointed out to the chair that um, we are now post submission deadline, post the publication of the combined proposal, and they are still continuing to dis discuss this and that we are concerned with this. Because this really, um, risks uh, affecting the overall uh, timeline and um, while we are not, of course very happy to talk to them and assist with any information that will make their, their work easier, um, of course the last thing we want is, is to be surprised at the end and, and have a question and be asked to go back to our community uh, on an incredibly rushed timeline in the end which risks um, upsetting the, the overall timeline. So we were very clear about this uh, and um, just from our perspective as, as well, we, um, I intend to continue to insist on, on getting a timeline out of them so that we, are, we know, so that we have something concrete to look at and, and so that we know that this will not um, um, basically blow up the whole uh, overall timeline. Um, and um, and I think from Alyssa's perspective as well, she was also fairly clear about um, that that they need to find a solution, uh, or they should try the hardest to find a solution that fits within the already combined proposal. Um, of course, the public comment period is always open for anyone to comment. Um, but um, unless we want to, to really jeopardize this, this timeline, um, we all encourage them to, to, to do so. Thanks. Thanks, Noorani. I think that's very much in line with um, my understanding, and I, I totally agree with um, what you say. So let's go to Paul and then afterwards, Andre. Thank you very much, Izumi. Uh, and thanks for the, the for the review on that or the update on, on that, Izumi and Narani both. But I think when you, when you when you bring these things up, I think some alarm bells are being raised here because what it sounds like to me is that um, the CWG doesn't seem to be able to reach like or or understand what they what they're wanting to reach by by the word consensus because I mean consensus isn't 100% agreement. So are, are they trying to reach a stage where there's 100% agreement or are they trying to reach a stage where there's consensus? Um, because this, this seems to be the question at hand here. I think with prolonging this, um, I'm not really quite sure where, where, where they're going to go to reach again 100%, 100%, I mean, the, 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 the agreement on this. And I think that, that, that again, if that, if, if that agreement can even be reached, um, I, I'm very happy that Irani pointed out to them that there are consequences to this because we would have to go back uh, to have these things reviewed. I mean, I'm, I'm sure they have to have them reviewed by their community, but we would also have to have these reviewed by our community, and that outcome may not be positive. So I, I think maybe a, a note, or, or I, I guess what Narani has mentioned here, I'm being as blunt as I can, have we actually said to them that, guys, are you trying to reach consensus or are you trying to reach 100% agreement? Thank you, Paul. I think that's something that we haven't really raised with them. So, um, yeah, I think that's a new uh, point and uh, it may be worth confirming um, about this. So thank you very much. Um, 
and Janarni said that she's happy to comment on that. So um, I think it may be something that we want to add as a comment to the CWG. Uh, so let's go to Andre. Oh, um, oh, okay. No, I think it's logical, yeah. Narani, if you if you comment on what Paul said, I think that's related, right? Okay, sorry for, for jumping in then. I, I just wanted to say that I, I completely support your points, Paul, uh, and we are very concerned. We are trying also to work in a collaborative spirit, of course, uh, but at the same time setting the boundaries. I'm not happy to, to continue to have these sort of informal collaborative talks for another half year if that just means that we are... Uh, jeopardizing the whole timeline. I should say that the, the, that two things and, and that from what I understand, and I'm not someone who's active in the CWG, this is, uh, it seems that there are a couple, a, a very few strong voices who have differing opinions on this. So they, they are nowhere close to consensus within their group. Uh, there's some very strong um, opposing views, but there are not uh, groupings from what I understand. There are a few uh, voices that are, that, um, are very uh, active. And I should say that Elisa also did, uh, has encouraged the, the CWG chairs to, to try to um, move towards consensus, like you say, it doesn't mean that everyone agrees on everything, but but to to try to at least move the direct move the um, discussion forward. So they have been asked uh, to do that. I certainly understand that they have a challenging task, but but um, that is their task, not ours. So that has been been asked out of them. Thanks. So let's go to um, Andre. Uh, thank you, Zumi, and thank you for, for this uh, helpful clarifications. Uh, I'm still slightly confused about the whole process, and that probably comes from the fact that I'm not totally understanding the modus operandi of CWG. So if my understanding is correct, the regional CWG proposal got um, reviewed by the community, right? And uh, as a consensus result, it was submitted to the ICG. Um, so are they planning to go through the same community review of this amendment of the proposal or they're just submitting this through the comments? Because in the latter case, I, I think it, it seems to me like end running the whole process, really. Yes, um, my understanding of this is that um, the chairs uh, probably don't uh, don't want to go to that direction. Um, that you know we ha um, the CWG comes up with a new option, and then we have to uh, the whole community, not just the CWG, but then will be forced to review the the entire ICG combined proposal. Um, so, but I my understanding is that they haven't completely ruled that uh, possibility out either. Um, and then what they're trying to focus more is that they try to um, make interpretation of the numbers proposal as it's being proposed so that um, they want to see variations, what variations are possible within um, being consistent with the numbers proposal. So that's why um, they had to sit lease analysis and um, so in addition to the IHF trust, uh, a couple of other options were being presented. Uh, I think one of the no most notable one is ICANN uh, holding the mark, and I think at, uh, according to um, Sidley's analysis, it said that uh, this is consistent with um, with the Chris Ping proposal. So. Um, and then I already shared with them that um, um, the CRISP team's understanding is that it's not because um, the RIRs are actually exchanging the SLA with ICANN um, and not the PTI. So ICANN would not be totally independent organization from the INA functions operator. But this has not been shared to the entire CWG. So I think it's, that's why this exercise of us first drafting our observation uh, to the CWG and sharing that in writing is so important so that CWG can actually try to figure 
figure out your position um, within their group. Um, so what are the options that they're comfortable? And then hopefully they will try to um, um, also consider the factor that they probably wouldn't want to um, uh, affect and delaying the whole process, the whole community going through the revision of the whole proposal. And so I think taking that factor into consideration as well, the CWG forms a, a position. So that's the direction that uh, we're trying to, to seek. At the end of the day, they might even still, like at the end of the day, they might think that, um, okay, even if this needs like a revisiting of the ICG proposal, they feel so strongly that um, this has to be done and um, they will form a different position. That, that's still a, like a possibility that um, um, the chairs haven't ruled out. Um, but I, th I think it's worth um, mentioning this kind of um, concern of ours when we actually share our observation to them as well. Um, I see hand from um, Cray. Thanks, Uzumi. Um, hi, everyone. Good to be talking again. Um, I just want to raise this issue about IPR, um, and, and I, like everyone else, feels I feel the frustration with CWG, um, but I think you know we as a community and part of the larger community um, need to be sort of sensible as well. And I'm and, and I'm not sure how we move forward with this. Um, you know, if we don't want this issue to jeopardise the entire transition. And what I want to say is this: uh, the intellectual property rights we're talking about here is trademark and domain name, none of which is essential to a, the continuation of our service. So, and I want to make sure that everyone is on the same page in relation to this. We're talking about the use of the 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 trademark IANA, the name IANA in association with the services. So, what we're talking about is not whether or not we can continue to provide the service in the future, um, what we're talking about is the ability to continue to provide that service in the future and calling it IANA. This is all what we're talking about. So what we're talking about is simply the name. And, and in reality, I mean, I, I, I feel that if we were to um, separate from ICANN or PTI in the future, um, and have uh, another body running our number resources allocation function, um, it is probably very unlikely that we're even going to use the word IANA to describe it. We'll probably call it the number resources allocation function. So I want to put some context into this. Um, so to make sure that we as a community should be flexible as well. Um, and I, I understand our proposal that's already there, and I understand that to alter it would, go, would involve going back to the community, but I, I urge everyone to be, to be reasonable and to actually consider what, is, what it is that we actually need in order to provide, to continue the services. Um, the other thing I want to say is that I think I have, I mentioned at the very start of the whole CRIS process, what we need is actually a license to use it. We don't need to own it. So if there's going to be disparate views between disparate community about how, who owns it, um, you know, trying to dictate ownership, I think, is overreaching because all we need is a license to use it, and that can be given to us in many, many ways, shapes, and forms. So I'm not suggesting at this point that we change our proposal. Um, I am simply urging everyone to um, be to take a reasonable step um, and to see whether we can work collaboratively and to reach a solution um, and not stick to our gun for the sake of sticking to our gun for the sake of saying to CWG that we are right and you're wrong, um, um, but really in the interest of transition because that is the big game. I would rather see transition and not have um, this IP issue. Um, holding everything up. Thanks, Craig. And I see hands from um, Nurani. So uh, let's go to Nurani, and then maybe we can um, discuss about Craig's point and uh, Nurani's points that she will be making. Thank you. And, and thanks for that, Craig. I think it's also really important 
for all of us to know what we're actually talking about because uh, uh, who would have known that the IPRs would, would take center stage in this whole process, right? We all know that there are other elements that are, uh, are equally or even more important, uh, uh, believe it or not, than the IPRs. Uh, but uh, just a few few points. First of all, because I saw that Mwenda brought up the question in the chat about uh, considering a plan B uh, if they insist on the RPR staying with ICANN. Well, we need to first of all be very clear about the fact that they, the CWG group um, does not have consensus on this. And I think if they were insisting on, on ICANN, if they had consist consensus on that, then at least they could put that back as a question to us or through the ICG, or they could have done it before they submitted their proposal, but they don't. So um, it is very hard for us, in, apart from being collaborative and, and sharing our information, there's nothing at this point that we can do, unfortunately. Uh, of course, I agree that we should uh, explore and try to do a bit of a, um, I hate to use the word, but a SWOT analysis. <laughs> of uh, looking at the various scenarios and of course that's a reasonable thing to do but I don't think we need to as a group uh, do that here and, and now. Um, we don't have a, an action from them or from, from the ICG to do that. Um, and then I would also like to, to point out and which is something we've been very clear about in, in uh, all our communications with, with the CWG chairs, as you know, we had informal communications with them before they submitted their proposal, is that we cannot make these judgment calls on behalf of the community. So uh, it is really anything that changes our proposal will have to go back to the community, as you all know. And, and uh, I certainly agree with your point, uh, Craig, about re being reasonable, but we also have to be very sensitive to the various uh, needs and, and views in our community. And I know that there are, um, there's a variety of, of um, or there's a, the, the temporal differences, of course, in our community on this issue as well. And, and, uh, and of course, the, the, the reason that the ITF Trust was, was chosen as a suitable um, holder of the IPRs was really because um, there's a history of the, the here that historical context that the Sidley analysis fails to to see uh, that this was really originally owned by the USC and then transferred to ICANN as part of the NTIA contract. And so really the the um, the IHF is really the root of, of the IANA and it's not some something that ICANN owns as a, as a product or a service that it delivers to, to the community. And so that was really the principle behind that uh, decision. Um, so, um, yes, yeah, I'll stop there. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, so let's go to Michael and then afterwards, um, Andre. Thank you, Zumi, and hello, everybody. Um, I'll try to make this brief because I think that Craig and Narani uh, got a lot of what I was going to say. Um, I do agree that we should be reasonable um, in terms of uh, seeing how we would move forward and being clear on what we're, we're dealing with here. Um, however, I will say that one thing I wanted to share is, you know, when I see these discussions, I think it is good to consider alternatives, but we have to be careful in terms of, we don't want to be moving backwards. And, um, you know, this is a collaborative process. Uh, we're not in some contentious negotiations and everything else. However, that being said, if you are, in a sense, negotiating a position, you know, I don't want to see the community, essentially, or the numbers community, essentially negotiating against itself in the sense that um, I think we have a proposal that we've put together and, and including a point about the IPR. I think the uh, protocols uh, community has also um, had a position on this. And then as, as uh, Narani pointed out, you know, um, and Paul as well, that the CWG and the names community doesn't seem to have um, a, I guess, firm position on this. So I think that it's very difficult to um, consider alternatives and trying to work together and find a solution if the person on the other side that you're trying to deal with doesn't have a firm position on their own in terms of what they're trying to do. And so while I think it's very good for us to have discussions and um, you know, consider what potential alternatives might be acceptable, I'd be very hesitant to change anything in our proposal or even propose changing anything in our proposal until we have some sort of firm response. Um, and 
So that was just kind of a, a feeling that I was getting when we when I observed these discussions. That I think it's great that our, our you know the Crisp team is is discussing this and looking at what might possibly be um, solutions and, and ways that we can resolve this. But I'd rather not um, try to be moving backwards. Also, so thank you. Thanks very much, Michael. So uh, indeed, um, uh, before I go to um, Andre. One of the concerns that uh, we actually um, express to uh, Jonathan and Liz is that suppose that we try to come up with like various, um, I don't know, reconciliation plan. Um, if the CWG says at the end of the day, well, we didn't uh, reach consensus on, I don't know, for example, I can hold in the mark option, then it just um, puts us in, in a very awkward uh, situation. So I. I think we, we really want to be open about possibilities in parallel as well, but it really helps to have um, first clarity uh, from the CWG about what would be an agreed, uh, agreeable option from their perspective. So I just want to um, share that this was something that um, was shared with the CWG uh, chairs, uh, what Michael has um, mentioned. So thanks, Michael. And then uh, let's go to um, Andre. Uh, thank you, Zumi. Um, I, I totally agree with what Michael said about uh, difficulties in negotiating or reconciling something uh, with someone who doesn't have a position clearly articulated. And that's why I put this comment in the chat room that I'm not sure there is an issue. I'm not sure that there are any requirements that haven't been met. The only thing we saw is Sidley's uh, three scenarios, which not necessarily reflect any requirements, right? So I could understand if there were concerns, and for instance, people would have commented that trust lacks certain accountability to um, names community. I think that's an issue that could be discussed. But just discussing Sidley proposal and trying to reconcile something that I'm I'm getting confused here, really. Uh, yes. So I think that's why our suggested way forward is that of course we want to be collaborative, and so that's why we're sharing our um, observation with our uh, CWG um, um, on the different options. So that um, you know they can first it can be a reference for their consideration, and then in case the CWG comes up to us and say, hey, we didn't manage to uh, reach consensus on on what seems to be um, compatible with a numbers proposal, would you consider this option? Then well, it also depends a lot on the timelines, but um, so I think. At that point, that we can actually, um, yeah, say yes or no about uh, certain things. Um, so I guess I'm pretty much um, saying what Andre has mentioned in a, in a different way, but saying the same thing. Um, so as the next step, um, I have circulated um, a draft of the observation that. Um, um, to be circulated to the CWG. That's just a draft. Uh, so I would like to hear the CRISP team's input, whether this um, observation is uh, consistent with your understanding. Um, and uh, I, I guess we can um, discuss the details of this uh, text um, online, but just to share the structure of this. I'll first explain the spirit of, um, of our proposal. That's, so it's not just uh, about the legal issues, but uh, I think it's very much linked to um, the principle that, um, yeah, um, this ICANN holding the mark um, came with um, NTIA holding the contract. So it was initially held by a um, University of Southern California, and then now that um, the contract is gone, I think it's worth considering whether or not um, it's should we, does it make sense for ICANN to hold a mark? And I think another point is that um, the IETF is the root of um, 
of the inner functions. That's, um, this is actually defined in the RSC, so that's where it comes from. So I think just so that they would actually know that in addition to these legal implications, this is the spirit of this. And then an observation pretty much based on the discussions on the Christine meaning list, whether certain options are consistent um, with the, um, the number of proposal. Um, this is very short. So scenario one, uh, I can holding a mark is not consistent. Um, uh, scenario two, uh, I think that's PTI option. That's uh, very obviously not consistent because they are the INA functions operator. And then a the third option, uh, this third scenario is an independent trust. Um, so that includes as a specific example, we have listed the IETF trust, but it can be any other neutral uh, body that would still be consistent with our proposal. So, but having said that, it doesn't mean that uh, we will totally close all options that are not uh, consistent. So I've added some additional like um, elements that may be needed in like uh, considering each of the options. So for example, um, the yeah, under functions operator holding the, the mark, I think it's like very not consistent, most not consistent. So I don't know if there's any room for uh, reconsider, reconsidering, but like in, in the case of uh, ICANN holding the mark, this would act certainly need um, discussions within a community, um, so not just the CRISP team, but then on the global list. Um, and um, so we haven't we, we may not totally close this option, but then there are some implications that it might affect the timelines because this would like need this kind of discussions, not just within us, the CRISP team, but then we'll need to do this with the wider numbers community. And I would expect different opinions surrounding this. So I think it's then up to the CWG to think that, okay, if they, set, if they have this uh, kind of uh, implications on timelines, um, are they happy to consider the option that is clearly consistent, or do they still feel that um, they would want to push for this another option? I mean, I think at the end of the day, we it's uh, it's it's their decision, I suppose. But um, so that's just to share our side of the observation, so that they will be able to come come back to us uh, with with a position. Um, Andre. Uh, thank you, Zumi. Um, well, I agree. Let's let's uh, uh, provide specific comments online. But just in general, I like the structure. I think that's that's a very well done. Uh, from my perspective, as a historical perspective, I would put IETF as the main focus. Uh, that the IETF is the origin of uh, IANA and IANA registry. Well, it, it's not fair to say it's the origin because IANA actually predates IETF, but uh, that. Uh, main registries of IANA, uh, their origin is uh, comes from IETF specifications. Um, I won't put too much uh, focus on NTIA uh, because again, there's some um, discrepancies here. The NTA contract uh, came later uh, after transition happened and ICANN was created. So it's actually not 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 correct that it comes from the NTIA contract uh, that is going to be released now. So. Uh, if we want to keep this point, I think we need to come up with better wording. Um, another thing, and this is also for the background, um, I think coming back to the rationale why uh, the um, number community uh, put those requirements or, or expectations, uh, it comes not from the fact that, uh, for instance, trust is the boss here. It comes from the fact that the hold of IPR shouldn't be the I for two ease and to ease and facilitate smooth transition to another operator should that happen. Also on the assumption that there are multiple, there might be multiple uh, IANA services operators serving different communities. So I think maybe we need to include this background information because it gives the rationale for the decision of the uh, numbers community that completely escaped from the Sidley's uh, analysis. Oh, thank you for those uh, two pieces of information. I think that's uh, helpful. Um, and um, 
let's see if people have any comments on Andre's uh, point. Um, and if not, I think now it's it's a matter of um, brushing up the language um, that um, has been circulated on the mailing list. So I think if people have any other thoughts and observations on Andre's point or any other points that I've described, I think it's worth um, confirming and having this uh, verbal discussion so that it's easier to to make edits and changes uh, online. Okay, I see um, no hands. Um, so let me um, double check that um, a quick hand, yeah, Nurani. Sorry, Sumi. Uh, a very quick hand. Uh, no, um, and and I should. I don't have that many comments because um, I I have reviewed it already. But um, I just wanted to say one thing that uh, has been pointed out in several other places that we actually didn't include in this uh, in this text was uh, that. The Sidley um, analysis um, is really an analysis very much from the names perspective. Um, and maybe that is um, important to point out as well, uh, that it is not a, a sort of a, a neutral, maybe we need to find a better way of saying it, but it is not an analysis that looks at the, the advantages and disadvantages with the scenarios for all three communities, but really Solely focuses on the interest of the, the named community. Thanks. Thanks for this clarification, Rani. And um, so, unless um, there are any other suggestions about a way forward, um, I, I suggest that uh, we, we move this uh, and then we'll seek for feedback online. Uh, and let's fix this by um, Monday 17th. Let's target to submit to the CWG by Monday 17th because they'll have a call on the 20th. And I think it's helpful that we share as early as possible um, so that they can actually have discussions um, before the call online. And then it might be easier for them to, to come up with a with a general position, I, I don't know. And I do also want to emphasize the very good point that uh, Craig has raised, that we want to work in a collaborative spirit, of course, and we really want to look at the bigger picture. So um, I think this time we're just simply sharing our observations to help them for their reference. And then we, we want to constantly keep in mind that um, um, what would be the most helpful in terms of the transition. And of course, we, we don't want to you know, uh, fight or hostile with uh, CWG. Of course, I, I don't think anyone is uh, intending, I'm not suggesting that any, anyone is, but um, um, yeah, just uh, yeah, keep this uh, spirit in mind as we go all th through the process. Uh, so it's a little bit uh, challenging, uh, but overall, I'm I'm optimistic um, that we don't have any other um, issues that uh, we observe as inconsistencies. So thank you very much, um, everybody, for your input on this. Um, and then uh, I'd like to seek for your comments um, online. So uh, let's move to another agenda, which is uh, Chris a comment to the CWG, uh, uh, no, 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 ICG, ICG. Um, and thank you to everybody who volunteered to work on this um, and then have circulated, especially um, Andre, John, and uh, John Vier. Um, you have circulated this in advance so that um, people had time to, to take a look. Um, apologies from me that uh, um, I circulated my part of the question the last minute, but I think we've covered the draft of all the questions. And um, so it may have been two last minutes uh, to take a look at um, at my question and possibly Nurani's. But um, Andre, uh, Andre, uh, John, and Jongi, do you have anything that you would like to highlight on how we have responded uh, or like um, hear from hear the feedback from the Chris team members at um, at this call? It seems, okay, Hans from Andre. Sure, um, well, uh, 
when answering my questions, uh, I came from, well, basically my main, uh, well, ah, rewind. Um, so I think in general we complete, uh, we, we're agreeing with the ICG assessment of the whole proposal. There are no inconsistencies, there are some details, the implementation details that need to be sorted out. So I think it doesn't differ much. There are no uh, real substance that, that you know, stands up, uh, that stands out, that really shows some problems or, or issues. So from my perspective, that's a pretty straightforward reply, at least in for the four questions um, I answered. Um, I, I, I looked from the, uh, as I think we agreed before, I looked from the uh, numbers community uh, standpoint of view at the whole proposal and didn't attempt to assess well, I looked at other elements, how they work together, but didn't try to assess areas that are not uh, directly related to numbers. So that's some comments on how, how my, my four questions were produced. And thank you for the comments that I received. Thank you very much, Andre. And um, I personally agree with the approach that uh, puts a focus on the numbers community perspective. And then so in terms of, for example, like workability of, or compatibility, does it appear workable? Does it appear um, compatible, this single proposal from our perspective? I think that makes a lot of sense because we can't really speak on behalf of like uh, other communities, obviously. Um, and um, so, your your draft made a lot of sense to me, and um, maybe we'll give it um, chance for every, everybody who may not have had a, a look um, for your part. And uh, yeah, uh, and then uh, thanks, John, for um, saying that um, you follow the same uh, thought pattern as Andre. Yeah, um, and then let's go to Nurani. Sorry, I skipped you. No, well, sorry for, for taking the floor so much. Um, no, well, I, um, first of all, I, I read both the John and Andre's uh, texts and I thought they were very good. Um, I'll go back and, and see if there are any more feedback I'd like to give. But I just wanted to, to say as a general uh, comment when I uh, sent in my text, I must admit that I actually struggled a bit uh, in finding the right balance because I think and, and I'd actually like to seek uh, guidance from, from the rest on the, in the CRISP team because I think um, as, as the CRISP team, as representatives of our community and as experts on our proposal, um, it, we can certainly comment on how workable the proposal is or if there are any interoperability issues or any conflicts or anything like that. Uh, but I, find, I found it a little bit hard, so for example, I addressed the NTIA requirements by simply looking at our proposal and, and, and using that text. Um, and I found it a little bit hard to know how to strike the right balance. On one hand, I think there are certain things we with authority can, can comment on uh, and some that we can't. And I find that as crisp representatives, it might be hard to, to comment on all the other Communities, uh, um, part the 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 other community proposal in the um, combined proposal. I might have a personal opinion about it, or the organisation I represent might have an opinion about it, but I'm not sure if I have a crisp opinion about it. Uh, and I found that just rehashing the text that we had in the uh, numbers proposal was, was maybe not that useful. Um, but I can certainly see that um, it is probably good that we try to answer all the questions. So even if we only do it that way, uh, that could be useful in that it helps guide others in the community in answering. Uh, but I'd really like to hear uh, if, if anyone else can offer some guidance on that. Thank you. Thanks, Narani. Um, um, I also have the similar question um, as Nirani. So um, before I go and hear from the others, can I just also ask my question as well? So um, I think the reason uh, why Nirani and uh, I had more challenge about thinking about these questions is that the, the questions that we covered is more very general um, points, such as like for my one was like, um, 
do you think that um, the proposal will uh, continue to meet the NTIA criteria in the future? Or um, does ICG uh, report an executive summary accurately reflect all necessary aspects of the overall proposal? So it doesn't really ask about incompatibilities or workabilities. So I think that was the kind of challenge, a similar challenge that I had. And, um, and then my current approach is that, um, so I focused a lot on the numbers um, community perspective, uh, but briefly mentioned uh, what may not be too controversial about other communities. For example, like, um, I don't know, when, when we mentioned about the future, the uh, um, NTIA criteria will be met in the future in terms of um, supporting and enhancement of the multi-stakeholder model. Um, I think the RIR structure is based on very much community and members, uh, so the, it will add like necessary checks and balances um, in case this does not get met in the future. And then it seems that the IETF and ICANN also have their own community-based structure. Uh, so it's a little bit different from the RIRs, but it may be fair to say that um, they, they may have similar checks and balances. But I don't know, that might be uh, stepping a little bit far. And I wasn't sure if it's more helpful for the ICG to have um, view from an, an integrated point of view, or uh, we just uh, stick with um, the numbers perspective. So um, let's open the floor. And um, I have Paul. Uh, thanks, thanks very much, Izumi. Um, I read the draft that you circulated just before the meeting. Um, and I could see the points that were being asked, and they're very much the way you've just described them. I do agree with the document. Um, I, think it's, I think it's fine. Um, although I, I felt that when I looked at the questions and the answers, I think what we were doing is we were reconfirming the positions of our communities, really, which are the people that we're supposed to be serving here. And I think that if we look back at the ICANN meeting in Buenos Aires and listen to what Larry Strickland said, I think the questions that were asked in the response to the ICG very firmly plant us into making sure that we are doing what our communities have actually asked us to do and what they're expecting of us. Are we staying true um, to the values of the, of, of the communities, even as a collective, right? So I think if nothing else, that, that the response serves as re, again, reconfirming that. And I think that from our perspective, I, I would hope that nobody from the you know, that's on this call would disagree that the Chris team hasn't tried to uphold that value um, for the numbers community, even considering the other communities. So um, perhaps, I mean, I like the document. I think that if, if I had any suggestion to it, then I would even strengthen a little bit those general comments um, to show, you know, those bits that, that we are obviously staying true and we are listening to what our community has asked from us. Thank you, Paul. Um, so, um, uh, just just to be clear, are you saying that we focus mainly on on the numbers community perspective? Then, well, I'm not saying that because I can see that we've had, you know, like I I can see in the bracketed text you've had some comments saying, oh, you know, like we're deferring this because we don't really have a comment there. Um, mm -hmm. I think that yeah, we probably are in the best position to comment on what we know best, and that's the community we're serving. So I think the way the document was written there. I think was was quite good. Um, I agree okay. with it. Okay, great. Okay, right. Um, thank you. Yes. Um, so th thank you for this. Um, so that's exactly it. we. I put a lot of focus on our community views, and then something that seems pretty obvious and might be helpful to give like a, um, an affirmation, like. Um, or like, uh, I don't know, like support, so that, okay, this is good. Even from the other community part, um, I, I thought that it would be good to give encouragement to this um, ICG. So that was the kind of spirit that um, um, I drafted the, the response. That's the way I read it, Izumi, so. Okay, thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe this would be the direction that um, we we seek for. And then if there are any part that we don't feel comfortable to comment about other communities, I, I think it's not a must. Um, 
So um, let's try to, let's then, I think the next step is that, um, so we give it um, um, until the end of um, this week to, for people to comment on the, um, the individual components. Um, so the points that um, Nirani and I circulated, um, I think you, you can have until um, UTC 14 so, um, on Friday. And then um, it would be helpful if Michael, um, thank you for volunteering all the time, that um, and, and um, combine these um, proposals in, in a single document. And um, hopefully, uh, people have already, you know, commented on the individual components, so nothing too controversial. And we can have this out to the global list either on. I don't know how much time do you think you would need, Michael, to to compile the proposal. Um, would um, would you be able to do it within Monday or Monday next week, or would you need like uh, two days or something? Okay, so let's shoot for Monday, and then so let's target to share this on the global list uh, on Tuesday next week, um, and then we. And this hopefully would serve as a reference to um, the wider numbers community, and we certainly want to encourage our community to submit comments to the ICG, even if it's just a simple support. I think it's it's really good sign that many of our community members support the ICG proposal. So I really would encourage um, you all to communicate this to your respective. Um, regional communities once this um, crisp uh, draft response is out um, on the global uh, list. So I think we are good um, on this topic, unless anybody has any other comments on this um, Chris comment to the ICG proposal. I see no hands. Uh, so then let's go to this, um, the final point of the agenda, SLA version 2. Um, so yeah, it's out and uh, I think we have until, we don't have that much time. I can't remember the exact date from the top of my uh, head. Does any, can anybody um, identify uh, immediately uh, when is the deadline? The end of the month. Okay. Oh, thank you, Craig. Um, and I think I suggested that we actually um, give ourselves uh, two weeks to review it um, and uh, see if there are any comments. Um, compile as many comments as much as possible before um, this additional CRISP team call next week. Um, the date is not fixed yet, but uh, we propose to have um, instead of um, uh, the one in two weeks' time. I think now is uh, quite a lot of agenda to discuss, so we want to uh, suggest having uh, a crisp team call next week, and we we will try to um, have comments as much as possible online before this, and then we'll agree on uh, what we're going to say um, to the NROEC on the um, second version. And then the basic approach I suggest is that, uh, um, again, we review um, first, we review whether the Christine comment was uh, addressed reasonably uh, for the first draft, and then um, any additional elements that uh, we didn't propose, is this again consistent with um, the number community proposal? I think that will be the kind of pers perspective that uh, we want to review. And um, and I, I don't feel the need to uh, go through the same big process as the last time, and we just leave it to individuals to share their observations on the mailing list, and then we, we can just uh, discuss uh, at the coming call, and we can just uh, put them together in writing and submit, uh, make a submission. So that's my suggested approach. Uh, but if anybody have any other thoughts, suggestions, um, I'd be interested to hear. Okay, um, I, 
thank you, Andre, for agreeing with this approach. Um, so I can't remember from the top of my head what exactly deadline that I have set. So I'll I'll double check um, on the mailing list and I'll send a reminder, like a recent that this is a reminder. So please comment by this date. Um, oh, Craig, please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Zumi. I'm not sure whether we finished on the SLA, but I just wanted to keep, give a very quick update about the uh, uh, review committee charter. Um, and simply to say that um, obviously the comment period has closed. Um, the, the, there are a number of comments, but I don't think any uh, substantive. But um, we are working at the moment to coordinate a response and an update from that um, at the legal team. Um, I, I'm not sure whether it would actually involve any change to the agreement off the top of my head. From my memory, there weren't too many um, substantive comments, but we're certainly going to have a look at it and we'll produce a matrix and, if necessary, a revised document uh, after submitting it to the NRO. I just wanted to give that quick update. Thank you very much. It's very helpful to know, um, and uh, it's good to know that um, you know there were no substan substantive uh, comments, and that's very much consistent with our comments as well. So it's good to confirm that the things are moving smooth in terms of uh, preparing the implementation, both on um, the SLA and the review committee. So thank you, Craig, for this uh, update. Um, very helpful to know. Uh, and then uh, maybe it would be um, worth uh, checking the when would be the next uh, uh, Christine call um, uh, next week. So I think I suggested uh, two dates. Uh, it, I think maybe we can just uh, confirm the availability of um, everybody at the call now because I think many of the members are here. So there's um, 26 um, work for everybody. The same time. So, oh, hand, yeah, Nirani, please. Uh, I'm I'm sorry, and I might be confused, uh, but um, we did have a a call set, a regular Chris team call on the 26th that uh, UTC. 1300, uh, and that was part of the, the schedule that Herman sent out uh, a couple of months ago. But uh, I think there was also talk, unless I missed something, I there was talk about putting in an additional uh, CRISP team meeting next week uh, that we asked uh, the Secretariat to do doodle polls for. Um, unless I missed something, uh, but I believe that we said Wednesday or Thursday next week. I'm happy to be corrected. Thanks, Nirani. Um, and I think Andre says that um, it's um, on his calendar as well, and John as well. So um, yeah, I think it's. It, let's double check the exact uh, date, but it seems like the 26th. Um, but let's double check with um, NRO Secretariat. Uh, uh, well, actually, can we check with the um, NRO Secretariat now? Yes, I believe you asked uh, to set up a conference, a doodle poll to see whether you would have it next week on Wednesday or Thursday. I'm sorry, I apologize, we did not set up the poll, but that was the idea. And it's okay. possible to have it either on the 29th, on the, sorry, on the 19th or the 20th, as, as you see fit. And just oh, to clarify, okay. Cindy, right. it was yeah, not... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. It was not instead Sorry. of the... Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I was just um, confused from the regular time. So it's either on the 19th or uh, 20th. So um, so I would like to request the NRO Secretary to set up a doodle poll, which one of the days work. Uh, and uh, yeah, so let's fix the, um, the date by the end of this uh, week. Yep. And, and just okay. to be clear, this is not instead of the call on the 26th, but it's uh, an additional uh, call. So we also need to make sure that we announce that if we have that call. 
Mm -hmm. Yes, right. Thank you for this clarification, Rani. So we're going to have a call next week and then also on the 26th as well. Um, and thank you, uh, Loriana. So um, uh, we look forward to the poll. So I think that's... Um, oh, what's the objective of the call? Um, is to, um, to update about... Um, um, uh, comment on the ICG and um, also on the IPR, I, I suppose, uh, and then any development on the um, SLA uh, draft. Okay. Um, so if um, no other um, comments, Let's. Uh, I think we've covered everything from the agenda today, um, and um, the SLA comment is due uh, at the end of this month, um, so 31st of August. Yep. Okay. <laughs> um, any other final comments or questions? Thanks to all the observers as well, and um, so thanks everyone for um, for the contributions. And so I'll remind um, you about the things that I need your comments. So thanks, and um, have a good day or evening wherever you are. Thanks everyone. Very radio station there, is Zuby. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. So, 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 so.